museum, would you believe? So we are with Perry and Jeffrey and Faitaima. Just explaining the whole existence and justification museum rather than storage. These carvings were stored um, under the um, old uh, memorial hall. And in fact, it is a changing area for rugby and every, everything else there. And then they're going to have a small room just for uh, records, mainly council records. They'll be put away. And the concept of museum, as we knew it, um, was then shelved. And several years later, I was involved. I've still got the letter, letters correspondence and that from the original director, Patterson. And, um, and a farmer I knew, they found some moa bones at uh, Broadman's. And, um, and next thing I sent to Wellington, we returned, oh, you haven't got a facility store. That revived the interest. And, um, and me being the shadow in the background, um, it was part of Catalyst to get public hearings and revive the idea of a museum. The museum, when it came, was principally to re erect and, and to place the um, carvings for the meeting house. The meeting house, as, as you see here, what they call the reed carvings. We had Maori advisors. One of them was um, uh, Frank Reed from the Reed, uh, Reed uh, family. Reed carvings were called that because the Rutaru Akava. He um, stayed with them for six months and did the carvings there. But none of the family could tell us who was what or the meaning of the carvings or anything else. That was completely lost or merely stored by the family. The, the end of Tongariro Street have got the gateway, which has now re-erected part of these carvings at the end of Tongariro Street, which uh, with the mountains in the background have been photographed by thousands of times as they are tourists and that. Uh, there. So this small area allocated to the museum is principally for the um, carvings in the museum. I displayed at the old, um, old uh, information centre and part of promoting the idea of the museum, I, I lent a few, few of my things that were, um, were displayed uh, for the public and then being, having the accursed name Fletcher it suddenly became part of the Reverend Fletcher collection of the Presbyterian. So, so we, we looked at a book that was published in the 1950s by, I think it was H. Fletcher. Yeah, that was and, a, and just had some of your photos in from mm. back in the 50s mm. that had your attributing them to mm. you being a photographer. And I thought, oh, I wonder if that Fletcher is a relation to you. I, I knew her, I, I knew her quite well, but no, that was part of a Presbyterian Reverend Fletcher came here in 1896. He was also a foundation member of the Polynesian Polynesian Society that uh, took over much from the uh, from um, as a uh, recording catalyst. And the founding members were, uh, as you sent in the email, Smith and um, White, John White, Percy Smith, foundation members, but suddenly re writing and controlling the what was um, what was expected of Maori history. But here then different artifacts came and um, I've got newspaper archives that are not mentioned at all in their 30 years of the History Museum. None of my 10 years of continuous attendance, the people running a museum to have an ex ex exhibition, an exhibition and they thought there wouldn't be any interest in the exhibition. So I put on, and it's covered in the newspapers and that, I put on the first exhibitions in which I, uh, I gave the um, fishing history, uh, the unconstabulary, timber history, everything else. I amalgamated and put everything on that offshoots later became independent exhibitions that the museum set up. And they got far more going to that first exhibition than they got in a whole year of uh, people just wandering into the museum as it was. And it confounded the people that thought there would be no real interest in the museum. So that revived and consolidated the museum here. And then when the library closed, we were justified in acquiring all the use of the bigger, bigger, wider space in the museum and expanding it. 
So one went to the other to the other. But that's my own story, my involvement in my um, position. I was with the um, Museum and the Trust. So I saw many exhibits come in and go. I have a um, retentive knowledge of all the files and archives that were ever put in here. And unfortunately, late administrators Later administrators, um, when I asked for things, they'd have no idea what, what was where or anything else. You know, I said a new fault line came in land. Yes. Now a whole lot collapsed that's end into the lake. The far, the far, far end here. So this subsided. It wasn't the fact that the, la the lake rose; it was the land subsided. Because it's saying there that the lake subsided. An average of three meters. Sure, of the lake. But if the lake subsided, no, how come no, these no. trees have been buried? It looks like the land subsided. The land subsided. Three meters. So they've got it wrong. That's so what I'm thinking is this. Um, we might have find if we spend time to have a label. That's right. Hmm. <laughs> so I'm thinking. So I remember. I remember canoeing past there canoeing past there, canoeing past there, so Rangatira Point could be here. Oh, no, that, that's, that's your, um, that's your Kutupa. Yeah. Oh, Kutupa, yeah, yeah, yeah. And where I've got the container, you just took a photograph of yes. was here. Yes. And the little, um, little step thing was way down below. Okay. But I've got an old black and white photo still showing standing palisades along that part here. This is a natural divide here yes. and, and it was used to um, for a par on this side as, as, a, as, as, a, as, a, as a natural thing on that, that side coming here on that side there. But, um, yeah, I just think it's so that, that that's not a river, it's not a river. No, no. Okay. See, one of some of the old maps, they put blue lines on anything like that, but they, a lot of them are dry gullies. Right. But from the air, when yeah. they're doing the mapping, they made them put blue little answers up those streams and creeks and they're not. So you, you said at one stage they wanted to bring the road down um, around here. The, the Maori people yes. want to bypass the subdivision yes, and go the road through and down and across. Because they're landlocked at the moment, they can't... Ah, uh, no, they're not. They've got a road coming up here, they have to back and meet the forestry, and they can come down from, from, from there. Coming, but they do... coming from over here, the road goes right up and connects the top of these hills, and they so they could come directly down mm. at given points. Hmm, but it's hardly direct route compared to say how the Rangatira and, and the strip here for the right of right away. But it it hasn't been retired because there's still building up there. Oh well, the um, the, the only place they've avoided is the Okuta Pass site. Yes, know, the direct one. Well, it was that part here. That part here, they scuttled a few um, forest sites this way, and, um, and it was only the right of way for uh, fishermen along here that they. Because um, I've asked about that at the. Uh, uh, yes. Wow, bark and slab huts holding over 100 men. Nothing to show Stockade Town or anything when you go on out there. As I say, you're unaware of all this when you're walking through the bush on the other side. Yes. The graves are only a festival or offshoot of that. I wonder town. where the old photos of the original houses and things are. Like, I mean, this is Oh, no, them, no. I, I uh, hmm. was. Uh, some, some of this is. Um, some of this was the Hawks Bay Museum and that. But others, I got glass plate photos for spent some time. It's uh, some I got to glass plate photos from Auckland Museum that have been um, here and done uh, in the old same seats and company out. These are Snyder cartridges. When I say I used to pick up Snyder cartridges and um, those are bullets, not the cartridges. 
and the bullets had a metal jacket and um, a lead jacket and metal 